On today's episode of Let's Talk Drones, I'm helping you set up your Beta FPV Pavo 20, Pavo Pico, or pretty much any drone from Beta FPV to fly with the DJI Goggles 2 and DJI FPV Controller 2. This process isn't super difficult, but there are some involved parts, so I'm going to keep the intro very short to keep this video as short as possible. Let's get into it. Let's Talk Drones. What's up? It's Chris the Drone Geek and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Drones. Let's Talk Drones is brought to you by The Droning Company, the number one online resource for commercial remote pilots worldwide. Make sure you subscribe to their YouTube channel, check them out across all major social media platforms, and sign up at their website, thedroningcompany.com, the number one online resource for commercial remote pilots worldwide. An abbreviated intro and an abbreviated sponsorship spot. This video is going to be a little bit more involved. It's not going to be terribly long, but the process for this is going to take some focus on your part so make sure you're paying attention to this video step by step i promise if you follow the steps and the configuration that i have set up on my beta fpv drone you will be able to fly your beta fpv drone with the dji goggles 2 and the dji fpv controller 2. a disclaimer on this is I'm using the DJI O3 Air Unit as my actual flight controller, the system that tells the drone what it needs to do based upon the inputs I'm putting in on my goggles and on my controller. This does not necessarily apply to any other VTX, including the DJI FPV Air Unit, the original Air Unit from DJI. So just to be clear, it may work with a different VTX, but I'm not saying it absolutely will. This is only for the DJI O3 Air Unit, just to be totally clear. If you follow this process step by step perfectly, by the end of this video, you will have your Beta FPV drone with your DJI O3 Air Unit up in the air. I promise you that. And if you're not sure what the DJI Goggles 2 or the DJI FPV Controller 2 entails or what they look like, this is your DJI FPV Controller 2. It is the gamepad style controller. DJI just recently released the DJI Avada 2 with the DJI FPV Controller 3. It may look very similar to this, but this is the DJI FPV Controller 2. This came out with the original DJI FPV and DJI Avada. And then these guys right here are the DJI FPV Goggles 2. They are not the Integra. They may look like the Integra. This is just a custom battery holder that I've got on the strap of my goggles, but this is the DJI FPV Goggles 2. So these are the peripherals that I'm talking about when I say we're setting up your drone to operate with those. So let's go ahead and get into it. So for step one, you'll want to activate your DJI O3 Air Unit if you haven't already. You can do this by plugging it in via the Air Unit's USB-C port and opening up the DJI virtual assistant for consumer drones if you don't have this program downloaded on your computer you can do so by going to dji's website and searching their website for the dji virtual assistant or just simply google it after activating the air unit make sure the firmware is up to date by navigating to the firmware menu within the assistant if the firmware is up to date you can unplug the air unit from your computer and continue with the setup if it isn't up to date make sure you update it before unplugging the air unit Step two, power your DJI Goggles 2 on and ensure that they are configured to connect with the DJI O3 Air Unit. You can do this by accessing the status menu through the goggles interface. Just swipe forward with one finger on the goggles touchpad to open the goggles interface menu. Scroll down the list to the O3 Air Unit option and select it. Once the goggles have confirmed the process of switching to the O3 Air Unit is complete, you can set your goggles aside. Step 3, it's time to pair your DJI Goggles 2 and DJI FPV Controller 2 to the air unit. To complete the pairing process, first press and hold the link button on the air unit until it flashes red continuously, which means it is in pairing mode. Once the air unit is in pairing mode, you can put the goggles in pairing mode by pressing and holding the oval button in the center of your goggles until they begin to beep. The beeping indicates that the goggles are in pairing mode and are searching for an air unit to which they can connect. The goggles will play a subtle two-tone chime once they have successfully paired with the air unit. Now repeat the process of putting the O3 air unit into pairing mode and follow it by putting the controller into pairing mode by single pressing and holding the power button for approximately 2 to 3 seconds. The controller will also begin to beep to signify it is searching for a pairable device. The controller will play a quick two-tone chime once it is successfully paired with the O3 air unit. 
Step 4. Before moving on to configuring our Beta FPV drone, in this case the Pavo 20, let's revisit the goggles interface to change one setting that will be crucial to using the DJI peripherals to control the drone. First, go to the goggles interface menu and scroll down to the settings menu. Select the menu to open it and then navigate to the control menu and open it by single tapping on it. On the control menu, you will see the second option down says protocol. By default, this will likely be set to standard. We need to change that from standard standard to S-Bus Bowed Fast in order to have it successfully pair with the DJI peripherals and be interfaced with them. Once you've selected S-Bus Bowed Fast, exit the menu and power down your goggles until you'll need them later. Step 5. Make sure you have downloaded Betaflight on your PC or Mac device. If you do not have Betaflight, I have included a download link in the description of this video. Once you have downloaded Betaflight, open it up and connect your drone via the Airframe's USB-C port. Now, for tiny whoops like the Pavo Pico and the Pavo 20 in this case, you've been given a USB-C adapter which goes into one of the tiny UART ports on the drone's airframe. You'll see at the back of the drone, there is a small port that you plug the adapter cable you've been given given, which looks like this. You plug that into the back of the drone, you plug the other end of that cable into the USB-C adapter, and then you use a USB-C cable into your computer or your Mac to plug it into your computer. It's just that simple. Once the drone is connected to your computer and is recognized as a USB device, click Connect in the upper right-hand corner of Betaflight. Once you have connected your drone to Betaflight, you can formally begin the process of reconfiguring it to recognize the DJI peripherals for flight operations. Step 6. We are going to be in Betaflight for the next few steps to change some of the settings and configure the drone's brain. So make note of that as I explain to you what menus we are accessing. You will not be closing Betaflight until I tell you that you should, so be a good boy or girl and listen to Papa. The first menu we're accessing is the Ports menu. By default, under the Serial RX column, the UART3 toggle will be in the active position indicated by a yellow slider. We want to deactivate UART3 and activate UART3. UART 5 instead. The reason for this is because the BTX, in this case the O3 Air Unit, is plugged into the UART 5 port on the drone's flight controller. Once you've completed these actions, your menu should look like the one on the screen here. Once that is true, hit the Save and Reboot button in the bottom right corner of Betaflight. You need to at least save, if not completely save and reboot after making changes in each menu before navigating to a new menu as a best practice. Once the drone has rebooted, connect it again through Betaflight. Step 7. Navigate to the Configuration menu. This menu is a little bit more overwhelming with many more options and toggles to choose from. We don't need to make any changes to anything here other than the PID loop frequency. This drop-down dictates the frequency at which the PID loop computations are done, which is basically just how quickly the drone's flight controller interprets the commands being given to the drone and processes them into real-time movements. Make sure your PID loop frequency is set to 2.00 kHz for best results. Hit Save and Reboot, and then reconnect the drone before moving on to the next menu. Next, for Step 8, we are going to jump down to the Presets menu. Here you will want to use the search bar at the top of the page to search for DJI S-Bus Fast. This is going to be a preset that you're going to use for the drone. Once you've found this option, click on it to select it and open up its configuration menu. Here you will see a variety of buttons at the bottom of the pop-up menu along with a drop-down menu at the top of the pop-up. Before we can do anything, we must select from that Options drop-down menu. You have the options of Race, HD Freestyle, and Cinematic to choose from. These will essentially apply a preset tuning to the drone based upon your needs. If you are using a drone like the Pavo 20 or Pavo Pico, you will likely want to choose Cinematic for your preset profile option, but you are not pigeonholed to that if you want to go with something tuned a little bit more aggressively. That is totally up to you, but you have to use this preset for any of this to work. Once you have decided the option for your preset tuning, select it by using the checkbox before clicking the Pick button at the bottom of the menu. The pop-up menu for the preset should close, and at this point, you can favorite the preset by clicking the star in the upper right hand corner of the preset option box. This is recommended, but not necessary. It'll just make it easier to refer to in the future if you need to. After that, you should click save and reboot before reconnecting the drone to Betaflight. For step 9, navigate to the receiver menu now. 
The two sections we are going to pay attention to in this menu are the receiver section on the right hand side of the screen, as well as the channel map section below it. For the receiver section, you want to make sure that your receiver mode drop down is set to serial via UART and your serial receiver provider drop down is set to SBUS. Moving down to the channel map section, you want to make sure that your drop down menu below the header is set to AETR1234. Once your receiver menu looks like the one that you see on your screen now, you're good to hit the save button in the lower right corner before moving on to the next menu. Step 10, go to the modes menu next to set up the arming switches and flight mode menus for your drone if applicable. Make sure that your arm mode is mapped to AUX1 or your flight mode rocker switch on the FPV controller too. This will ensure that the rocker switch on the top left side of your controller is programmed to arm the drone's motors. If you have it set to the range that you see here on your screen indicated by the yellow slider section on the values bar, that will mean that the rocker switch pushed forward towards you when you are holding the controller will arm the drone's motors. You can configure this switch to whichever setting or position you like, but for this example, I recommend using my settings. Next, go to the beeper mode and make sure it is mapped to AUX3. This will set your emergency brake slash return to home button as the beeper that can be used to locate your drone in the event of a crash or misplacement while it is powered on. Finally, go to the Air Mode mode and ensure that it is mapped to AUX2. This will program the controller to switch into Air Mode when the top right rocker switch on your controller aligns with the values corresponding to the yellow slider on this menu. In this case, we will be in Air Mode when the right rocker switch is pressed forward toward you when holding the controller. Please note that unless there are other flight modes programmed into the modes menu such as Angle and Horizon modes, the drone will always be in Air Mode and toggling this switch will be meaningless. You could instead map this rocker switch to some other command such as turtle mode if applicable. Once your modes menu looks like the one you see on your screen or something similar that you can interpret, hit the save button in the bottom right corner before moving on. For step 11, navigate to the Motors tab. Without the drone powered on via a battery, this screen looks like it doesn't have a lot going on, and that's okay because we only came here to check two menus, which are the Mixer dropdown and the ESC slash Motor Protocol dropdown. Ensure that your Mixer dropdown is set to Quad X, move on to the ESC slash Motor Protocol dropdown, and make sure DSHOT 600 is selected. Once your screen looks like the one you see displayed on this video, click Save and Reboot before reconnecting the drone again via the button in the upper right corner of Betaflight. And last but certainly not least by any stretch of the imagination, step 12. The final menu we need to navigate to once reconnected with the drone via Betaflight is the CLI menu. I'll be honest, this was the hardest portion of the entire configuration because you need to understand what information to input into the CLI and how to input it to be successful. Fear not though, I've simplified it for you to save you time and aggravation by providing it for you in the description of this video and on your screen now. A big shout out to the user M600 on Reddit for providing us this data to be input on Betaflight's CLI. If not for them, M600X, I would not be able to make this video for you and I would not have been able to get my Pavo Pico or my Pavo 20 in the air. So a big thank you to M600X on Reddit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Copy this code and paste it into the input bar at the bottom of the CLI page. Once you paste it into the bar, hit enter on your keyboard and Betaflight will do the rest for you. At this point, you should hit save file to download the .txt file containing the CLI information for the drone. Keep that somewhere safe in case you need to re-enter it to essentially reset your drone in the future. Once this is complete, hit disconnect in the upper right corner of Betaflight and you can now safely close Betaflight for the remainder of this process. Now is the moment of truth. Power on your Beta FPV drone, your DJI Goggles 2, and your DJI FPV controller 2, and wait for everything to connect together. Once you have a video feed and your controller is chimed to let you know it is communicating with the air unit, hold your left stick or throttle down and push the arm rocker switch into the position you programmed it to via Beta Flight. Your motors should now be armed and you should be set to fly. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? Not painful at all. And now you've got your beta FPV drone up in the air. Good for you, I'm excited. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up icon down below. If you feel like there's something I could have done better, let me know down in the comments below. Or if you just appreciated the tutorial, I'd love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. If you liked this video, you love drone content made by drones, about drones, and for drone pilots, my friend, this is the channel for you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And 
while you're at it, hit the bell icon. You'll get a notification every time I post a new video. We're going to have more and more FPV setup, configuration, build tutorials in the future. I'm still like overwhelmed with information in my brain, but as I'm processing it, digesting it, and then able to fully understand it, I'm happy to share it with you here on YouTube in a way that I may not necessarily find on the internet myself. I'm going to deliver it to you in the way that I would like to have it delivered to me so that maybe I can help somebody out in the future. Again, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up icon down below. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and hit that bell icon. Again, you'll get a notification every time I post a new video. Until next time, I'm Chris, the Drone Geek, and I am out of here. See ya. Yo, yo, what you say? Steady screaming, yo, no right.